Uh, yeah, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Jan de Geer, and I'll do this matrix seminar by Professor uh, Lee. Uh, it's very distinguished. Uh, uh, I know him quite well. He's a physicist and mathematician, and uh, still very active, I can attest to, but he hasn't had a very illustrious career as senior management roles at uh, McGill the University of Montreal at the highest level. Um, and for several years, did wonderful things there. Um, has been director of Centre Recherche Mathematique in, in Montreal also for several years. Um, so very influential in, in, in Canada and now CEO Ivaro, uh, which is a new company established in 2016 by the uh, Canadian government, uh, with a brand of the Canadian government. Um, and it's about implementation of AI uh, in a responsible way. Uh, and he will talk. Thank you very much. And thank you all for uh, showing up for what it will be a talk about an institute after all. Oh, okay. So, and so the, therefore, this will not be your usual map talk. And in fact, it, it's a first also for me because I've spoken obviously about the institute but never you know giving a full hour talk about it so we'll, we'll see how it goes but um since this talk is uh taking place under the auspices of a matrix and it was mentioned that i have been involved with the math institute i could say that most of my career my professional career revolved around the crm which was created 55 years ago. It's, it's one of the uh, oldest uh, math institute, apart maybe from the, the IAS at Princeton, the uh, Henri Poincaré Institute uh, in, in Paris. Uh, and so let me give, it, give a spin or an introduction of my talk from, from that standpoint. Advances in mathematics really drive a lot of the uh, research, scientific research, and math institutes are really, you know, engines for um, catalysts for for develop for many developments. And I'll take the example of the CRM. Uh, in the '90s, that institute uh, created a, a first network by bringing together institutes or research centers in operations research so we we had two of them they will come in the uh, presentation as well as an organization in uh, uh, enterprise analysis and so we form a, a first network in mathematical modeling computing and mathematical modeling and then a little later uh, the three math institutes in canada so crm fields and pims in 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 the west uh, created what is called MITAX, another network of centers of excellence, which is now key to the Canadian innovation strategy. It fosters internships between students and uh, enterprises. In any case, um, at the uh, in the early days of uh, MITAX, uh, it supported a young fellow named Joshua Benjo, who will come again in my, my presentation. He was working on the neural networks, and uh, he was, in fact, appointed as the regional director of this MITAX at some point. Uh, later in its history, CRM organized itself with laboratories, it created you know, a number of laboratories in various disciplines, analysis, and uh, at some point, you know, I, I, I had the pleasure of integrating a center that had been funded, founded by uh, Benjo within the CRM, so that the CRM would also have a laboratory in artificial intelligence. Well, as we all know, uh, AI and especially uh, deep learning has, has made it big. And... Um, uh, this, especially when the, you know, the computing power uh, in, increased. And as it turns out, with respect to artificial intelligence, CRM is now a part of a bigger whole of something that it helped create. And so uh, you can therefore think of this presentation 
as an illustration of the remarkable effectiveness of Math Institute, it's I. This presentation is an invitation for us to talk about the initiatives we have, those you have here in Australia. I'm keen to hear about them. So I'm giving it with this, uh, this you know, mo motivation. So as a way of talking about the initiatives we have to support AI, but also as a way of indicating how Math Institute can really generate many very nice things. So let's let's move with the presentation. Let's hope. Oh, is this the which the screen? Uh, just want to move this uh, forward. Okay. All right. So the, the title was the Shifting Paradigms. I will come to that in the end. It's really the, the vision we now have for uh, this organization that I will talk about. And the, the, my talk will be organized in, in three parts. I'll tell you about what is this institute, then what is it, what has it done, and where is it going? So it is uh, a research institute about AI and its application. And it focuses also on, on transfer, as you will see. It is located in Montreal. Um, and uh, sorry for the fact, I'm not sure Melbourne is on, on my map, but that's the way it goes with <laughs> these standard maps. It is uh, uh, the result of a collaboration uh, between a number of universities with the University of Montreal in the lead. The others are the two affiliated schools, the business school and the engineering school, which are independent organization, and McGill and the University of Alberta. This, this is evolving, but this is initially how it started. It currently brings together more than 2,000 researchers, so it's uh, fairly big, and with 100, more than 150 partner organizations. The mission, it's really stated at the end, is to lead to support, to encourage uh, collaborative development, both in research, I'll, I'll describe research and transfer to, you know, to launch and make AI be uh, adopted broadly for science and for the benefit of society. So, Ivado is involved in all these aspects, so research, training, transfer, entrepreneurship, EDI and indigenous engagement and, you know, overarching all that, the development of talent. And I'll be giving examples of activities we have in, in all these sectors. Now, as you know, uh, AI is ubiquitous, but to grow, it needs other sciences, in part, you know, math, physics, chemistry, uh, but also, humanities and social sciences to really develop the algorithms that will be doing or delivering the potential we hope it has. It, we need to have humans in the loop, so it, has, it requires societal framing. As I said, it certainly offers the potential to accelerate discoveries, should bring consider considerable benefits to society, in particular in addressing global challenges, and it will definitely transform the workplace and the economy. So Ivedo has been structured to according to those needs. And in fact, it really brings together a remarkable array of disciplines. So AI specialists, of course, as it should, but also experts, and I have a long list, neuroscience, physics, chemistry, Indigenous studies, ethics, social science, I should not skip help since I'm reading most of them, law. So you can imagine the needs for all these areas, and we bring that somehow uh, together. And, uh, and then what is key is the collaborations between all these areas within academia, but also between academia, industry, government, and so on. Ivado. If you wish, you can view it as an umbrella organization. It comprises 
14 at the core, you'll see the, the full community is very broad, but at its core, 14 academic members. And I'd like to take a moment to uh, introduce these, uh, these uh, institutes, yeah, the arrow appears. So first, the CRM I was talking about, the Math Institute. Then this is a Center for Intelligent Machine. This is an institute in robotics at McGill. Stirelt, this is what, you know, there's always a traditionally been a strength in operations research in the Montreal area. This is one of the research institutes in operations research, uh, particularly focused on transportation, but not exclusively. This is digital health. This is within the University of Montreal, all that has to do with health and, uh, uh, you know, uh, computer science. Gerard is another operations research institute focusing on analytics. This one is the Insti Indigenous Future Research Center. Uh, so this is at Concordia University, focuses on research done and for Indigenous people, done by and for the Indigenous people. The Institut Courtois is a uh, recently established Institute at the University of Montreal with a uh, donation of $160 million to uh, advance the discovery of new materials using AI and, and quantum uh, computing. Uh, this IID is an AI institute at, in Quebec City at Laval University. Uh, IRIC, this is an institute in, for cancer research. Mila, this is our flagship institute for, with AI experts. This one has no title, it's Obvia. It's the observatory for the responsible development of AI. Semla, uh, this is a uh, uh, center in software engineering, looking especially at the compliance aspects of AI. Tech Tree Lab is at HSC. This is an institute in user experience. And Unique, uh, this is an institute that looks at the interface between neuroscience and AI. So all these members are, are part of Vivado and the contributing to its uh, scientific program. And to those, you need to add the two university hospitals. The University of Montreal has two uh, systems, the, the adult care one, SHUM, and also the uh, children. Uh, university hospital. And so these are partners as a receptor of, uh, you know, uh, systems that are developed, but also they, they have big research institutes that uh, are collaborating with the Nivado. So this, I hope, gives you a feel that this and, and this picture now gives a full impression of the full community. What I've described was in, in the middle, in the central disk, and uh, you, you have uh, other academic partners in the, the middle one, and you see all the, you know, the, the partners we have uh, at, at the outer uh, uh, analysts uh, going in all kinds of directions. So it, it, it is, uh, you know, a vibrant uh, community. Well, I, I, it's a privilege. You, you should know that I'm not an AI expert. I'm a mathematical physicist, as was said, uh, and so it's a, but with some experience at fearing things or encouraging people. Uh, but we have the uh, benefit of having as scientific director, Joshua Benjo. You probably have heard of him. He won the uh, Alan Turing Prize uh, together with Jan Lecoeur and uh, Jeff Inton for, his work on, on deep learning, and he's, an, and he's, according to Stanford University, the most influential uh, computer sciences of the day. Uh, I kept, I lost track of its H index, it goes, it increases by the minute, but it's, uh, I don't know, near, nearing 300. Um, and uh, the, uh, Pierre Dumouchel is the director of transfer technology um, he's the former director of an engineering school uh, in Montreal and a, an NLP specialist. So th this is the, the, the leadership, the management. Uh, well, 
it's it's remarkable. It gives me the occasion to tell you a little bit how it's structured. So we have a uh, COO, but also we have divisions uh, connect related to research, partnerships, training, communications, and strategy. And these are the people taking care of that. And the governance, not that it's so interesting, but it starts to be a large organization. So the governance has to be uh, fluid and effective. So it's fairly standard. Board of Governors, Executive Committee, Scientific and TT Committees, and, and so on. By the way, you, you feel free to uh, interject and, and ask questions if uh, you're curious about something else. So let, let me uh, just uh, say a few words about the history uh, of IVADO. So it was created as not an old institute, unlike the CRM, which is 50 years old. It was created uh, in 2016. And this, the, what precipitated that is the, uh, the landing of a big grant uh, under this program, Canada First Research Excellence Fund. It's a uh, fun person, but I, I did not <laughs> create that name. Uh, it, um, but, it distributed at the time, I think it's around $1 billion uh, amongst 10, 12, I'm forgetting the, exactly, but 12 uh, awardees. So it's intended to come with a big bang. Uh, and so this is what was obtained, 94, a little less than 94 million from the program. And then this, there was a two to one uh, leveraging initially. We're now, where we're going, we've just made a new application to this program. The answer could be coming anytime now. And uh, in that, currently we're asking for 125 million and we have, or in, in the bank, a four to one uh, leveraging. So, but initially, 2016, the purpose was to marry, to bring together uh, machine learning with operations research so as to bring value to data and to uh, support uh, decision making so this is how it was created and at the time this was when everything was coming together and the the, uh, the creation of Vivado really was a catalyst for a number of developments that came 2017 18 and so on so i'm listing some of them so there's the Pan-Canadian AI strategy and the support of MILA, this institute that uh, Benjo founded. Quebec, the province, also established its AI cluster. The federal government also established a program to, which is industry-based. Uh, so it's called, it was called the Super Cluster Program. Scale AI, the one dedicated to AI and uh, supply chains, was uh, established in Montreal, serving the whole country, but based in Montreal. And, you know, came many, many companies came to Montreal. There were many startups. And I mentioned this uh, Montreal declaration, you know, the Obvia, one of the partners, which is dedicated to uh, the observatory for the responsible development of AI, came out of a, an effort uh, which led to this declaration for the responsible de development of AI. And the OECD created then, in the aftermath of that, the GPI, the Global Partnership on Artificial Intelligence. And in the wake of that, a, uh, the CIMIA was created, the Center of Expertise in Montreal on Artificial Intelligence, to support the GPI. So, but all of this was really generated or you know, happen uh, after uh, IVADO was created. Okay, so uh, now this section, I'll, I'll just indicate some of the programs we have. Uh, and uh, so covering all, all, all the various aspects. So with research, the goal is obvious. We just want to create knowledge and to, to make it better. Uh, in terms of numbers, with the funding, the bulk of the funding we got was dispersed in supporting, in offering research grants, scholarships, and so 41 million has gone to that. Uh, in 
a year or so ago, we dedicated six millions to really uh, strategic uh, challenges. I'll come to those. And, uh, and well, of course, we've supported many people. Uh, some examples of advances, but it's, it's hard to, to pick, but just to, to give a, a sampling. Uh, one here, as the, the, this one was made the uh, Quebec, one of Quebec discoveries of the year. It has to do with standardizing the MRI scans, and in particular for the spinal cord. I don't know if you knew, but it was a uh, few no uh, physicians they could not compare the, so if you take one one year especially also with multiple sclerosis and then on the one six months later it was very hard to to compare so th this has been uh, really great benjo and lodi uh, they um, wrote a seminal paper on this marrying of uh, uh, operations research with machine learning uh, this as this uh, David Rolnick uh, has uh, given a roadmap of how AI can uh, help with uh, climate change. And uh, in the COVID period, uh, one big challenge in health also is bringing data together. And one of the uh, in remarkable, it's a guy uh, who works in intensive care, but is also a uh, researcher in AI, has developed a uh, a very useful data bank to um, that can be mined using AI intelligence and using federated learning between hospitals. We have in many hospitals in uh, in Quebec, um, and so the challenge is you, you probably aware, but uh, you know there's uh, all kinds of privacy issues with uh, such data, and so you need to be able to bring it together while leaving it where it is. So uh, th this was this was that. And publications uh, by the hundreds. Okay, these six big projects we, we launch uh, are here. One is uh, uh, associated to making decision under uncertainty. And this is particularly critical for instance with supply chains. Uh, the other is to use AI with respect to biodiversity. When I, a fact I, I learned is that Canada, I don't know the data for Australia, but Canada has in its soil 25% of the carbon of the, the planet. And so it better stay there. But this is put in danger by the biodiversity uh, you know, uh, undermining. And uh, so we, we have, we're using drones and platforms to study that and then to make sure what, what kind of nature-based solutions can be, uh, can be come up with. AI for human health. Uh, well, this is a big program to improve health systems, both in the treatment and also as the, in the management of hospital. So we were Minister of Health has invited Eva Du to use the whole ministry as a laboratory to, to try to improve the situation, which is not great. So uh, there's much to do. And then, uh, well, the acceleration of uh, materials, new materials and, and molecule discovery is one of these big projects. And the, the, the last is the AI adoption. This uh, group in uh, users experience is uh, looking into that. The, it, the, the whole process, this is where you see an institute like or like a math uh, science research institute where it's really adding value because uh, let's, for instance, uh, talk about the biodiversity uh, program. Uh, we worked hard to bring these people together. They didn't know one another. So the biologists don't necessarily know much about AI. And, and uh, so it required a lot of, uh, you know, pampering and, uh, and and work. But I think when it when it happens, this the, the value is, is remarkable. And and the same uh, happens with you know with any uh, well designed research center. Now, of course, uh, 
we're very active at uh, networking and uh, uh, putting out conferences. So you have a list of various things that, that have been done, as you can imagine. And so that, that's the part about research. So I'll, I'll just try to see where I'm at. Okay. Uh, and so I'll go over the, the various parts. So the training we're offering, uh, not for credit. Of course, the university is uh, mandated as its a responsibility to offer the courses for credit, but we, there's really an enormous need and appetite for training for, for various groups as uh, explained here, upskilling, uh, doing continuous, continued education for professionals, for, you know, uh, managers and industry leaders. Uh, and we also work, uh, the, the training uh, department and the uh, partnership, they work hand in hand to uh, advance knowledge mobilization. So, we have a program with various modules, which is called From Data to Decision. There's been a number of participants. We put MOOCs to, together, uh, one on deep learning, which is uh, very popular, another one on bias and uh, discrimination. And we are about to come up with a tool to for people to assess their skills. Where are they uh, really beginners or where, where are they? And this will be useful for both students that I was mentioning the biology students who, who want to pick up uh, and uh, but also uh, people in the workforce that want to improve their skills uh, yeah th this is an interesting program uh, the the data track uh, group of students it, it, this was a student driven would design a program and would invite other students to uh, say in, in medicine, who would need AI to analyze their uh, their data, uh, to meet an hour. It's the, the the program is an hour every day. So so they would come and they would do exercise about AI, and this would be structured by this uh, group of students. Been very successful. And well, we we will have other things. On transfer, this is a, uh, a distinctive feature of Vivado. The goal, again, is natural uh, to uh, create exchanges between academia and the non-academic uh, sector to, to go in both ways, right? To, to, to get ideas from the private sector, on what is really pressing to look into, and vice versa, to, to make them benefit from the advances that have been developed. Uh, so some numbers, so these are the 130 organization are members of Ivado, we've said that, uh, and there's been uh, over 500 projects that have been run for the budget of 76 millions, and uh, a number of researchers, it's always a challenge to, to find researchers to, to spend their time on that. Uh, but we're working hard on that. The, the way this goes, it's fairly standard. We first need to work with the partners to identify, to delineate with the project, then to put the team together. And then it needs to be, the project needs to be de-risked. So, so we manage to provide or find additional funding for the, for the project. And then we carry it and we try to remove the barriers to the implementation. A remarkable feature of Vivado, it, it's not everywhere. So we have 15, you know, uh, counselors for this transfer exercise. And they have, they bring together remarkable expertise. They all, except one maybe, they all have PhDs. Uh, and in areas you see, in, you, you see art, arts and culture, uh agriculture materials aerospace so it 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 is a fascinating team so this is a um, great resource that uh, we have the the chance of having at Ivado. so uh, of course there's been success stories uh in fact all these companies they came to Ivado with basically just an idea uh 
two or three people with an idea. Now, now they're valued. One is valued at the hundreds of hundreds of million. Brain Box. The so Brain Box has won many prizes at COP uh, meetings. It works at uh, finding electrifying cities and buildings and uh, making them, you know, uh, save energies. Uh, True North Marine. Uh, is about using AI for for the optimization of uh, naval, marine routing, as the name says, uh, in the face of uh, well fuel consumptions, uh, meteorological problems, pirate problems, and uh, in fact they have now uh, done so well that they've hired one. Uh, you know, of our graduates and operations research full time to uh, de develop their, their software. And Erudi is uh, uh, still remember when these two guys came. They're now valued. It's a young company that works at uh, uh, using, that uses AI for uh, human resources um, counseling. And uh, they are now valued at. Uh, if they're working for five five years or so now worth fifty five million, and they're expanding now in uh, in Africa uh, with the support of the Quebec government at the moment. One thing we also do is to develop a community of practice on on various issues with some of these companies, large and small. Uh, you see Air Canada, IBM, Hydro, uh, hydro uh, Power uh, Company, Intac, insurance companies, and so, and so on, uh, on, on various uh, questions. We are keen also to uh, uh, support the flourishing of uh, startups. And uh, we, we have a few programs. I'm sure you, so, so I'm really cu curious to hear about yours, uh, but to start the conversation, let me mention th those we have. Uh, so three will be discussed. The scientists and residents, this is the, the, the PhD student going in the, with the, within the team of the, or the management of a startup to offer expertise, to help the startup develop well. And, and so, uh, uh, there's a number, it's really going well. Uh, the scientists in action, it's the other way around. It's a, a master's students doing an internship, and this time for credit, within a startup to get the experience of what it is to, to uh, uh, start building a, a company. And a, a program which is quite remarkable uh, is the entrepreneur postdoc. Uh, this is a program whereby we provide salary at the good level for, you know, say a PhD student came up with an idea as the, you know, for, to commercialize something. And so we give him the, give that person the means of doing that. So providing salaries, providing expertise, providing also support for the, the management of the company. And we're, what has been noted is we're doing fairly well with respect to gender through, throughout these uh, various programs. That was about, uh, uh, yes. How does that work together with MyTax that you earlier mentioned? Oh, oh we, we, we collaborate very closely with MyTax. Uh, so when I say we, uh, when we de-risk problem, uh, or, or or projects, we we my tax comes into the uh, making the funding package. Yeah, talent, of course, on top. Talent is everywhere. So we in research we train people by through research in, in train within the the training component. Students are trained through them. Uh, Students you just saw are involved in, uh, you know, in the collaborative research with industry, with entrepreneurs. But above all, you know, we, we also have uh, uh, things that I've not mentioned that uh, are with respect to talent. And the first one is important. Uh, Ivado has already, with its funding, 
allowed or made possible the hire of 37 additional faculty, you know, on top of what was there. And with the new uh, application that we were keeping our fingers crossed, there should be the universities have committed to 48 more. So over the, the, that span, it, you, you can see that maybe 75 new faculty will be added to the, uh, the environment in the area, which was already strong since it uh, made it natural to put this investment uh, in, in this context. Uh, so there are prestigious chairs that have been uh, filled. So we, and we have postdoc fellows program uh, and so on, but uh, the uh, and various uh, yeah some something uh, that this, we do with the CRM which I it's the it's something which is which you will find in various math institute is the industrial problem sol solving workshop, and here we have a fantastic match between a math institute that brings the, the, the students, they could be in very abstract areas like representation theory or number theory. I, I think they, all our students in math should have the experience of working at modeling some industrial problems. And this lasts for a week, it's a remarkable experience, but with Ivado, you know, with CRM and within Ivado, we have access to all these uh, industrial partners. And so we have many problems to, to work on. And this often leads to uh, continued projects of a bigger scope and so on. So, so we have, uh, we do popularization, we do uh, tech transfer projects and, and so on. On EDI, this is an important aspect, especially when, when one talks about uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, and so Ivado has made a significant effort. Uh, our program is uh, framed like this. I think it's fairly standard. It's fix the numbers, fix the institutions, fix the knowledge. The numbers, well, we, we need to look at our stats and, and, and try to correct them. We have you know, the right balances. So we work on that to attract people, taking, being aware of the uh, diversity uh, picture. Fix the institution, well, the mindset that, uh, that needs to be evolved. And uh, the knowledge, well, this is, uh, uh, it's important that as we develop knowledge that these considerations be taken into account. And uh, so here, um, I is list, are listed a number of uh, programs. Let me mention the action inclusion pathway. So we've asked companies uh, to some of our partners, what are some of your EDI problems? Say uh, Google was uh, struggling with his handicap access issue within its facility. And so we brought one team of students that and these questions have to involve AI to to work on it with Google in Montreal, and they've sure enough come up came up with uh, something. So we've done that with five uh, teams uh, so far. Uh, of course, uh, advocacy uh, questions are taken into account. All right, so this at the, roughly the right time, takes me to the uh, last part of my presentation is uh, where is Ivado going? And uh, our vision is framed uh, around this uh, acronym R3AI. And I will explain, then I will go back to uh, what was the title. So AI is very successful. And I think we can say that we've done our share and we've obtained some success, but really one has to take stock of the fact that there are some pitfalls and there are you know, uh, hurdles to a very large and broad adoption of AI. And these uh, limitations have to do with the lack of robustness of the systems. The predictive power is when you're not too far from the situations depicted by the training data that has been used. 
so uh, working out of distribution is still an issue. The uh, reasoning capacity is small, taking into effect causal inference is it's not there yet. And there's always the issue of the, the ethical questions, the moral values that, that should be uh, folded into uh, the system. So our diagnosis, and we, which is broadly shared, is the fact that uh, we need now systems that are way more robust, able to work out of distribution, reasoning, so they are coherent and also one challenge to be talking about adoption is being able to explain if uh, you go to a physician and he tells you that you know zillions parameters are saying that uh, you you have this serious situation you'd like to know well how, why should i trust these this optimization of a zillion parameters and uh, and responsible of course so this is our, the R3, robust, responsible, and reasoning. And uh, we claimed this is the, the, at the heart of our new uh, vision, of our new strategic plan. And this is for what we've asked uh, the, the, the funding I've been talking about, this 125 million with uh, the uh, strong support. So altogether, this is a 571 million over seven years, I should say that, uh, with the industry uh, partners providing uh, more than $250 million. And uh, so the this has to do, or this could be depicted in these three parts. One is to build this art AI, really to uh, bring AI closer to the human intelligence, with work, I'll come back to that, with close work with neuroscience and social sciences and humanity, to, to use it, to use this improved AI to accelerate further uh, discoveries, and then to uh, work towards adoption, on the one hand, by also uh, bringing uh, advances in the science of implementation from our social scientists, and also working with our partners. So the picture would be like this. Um, so this R3 AI is the objects we want to develop and use. And uh, there should, you know, there's the two side, but this should, as with everything, it should not be viewed as being linear. This should be interaction between the left and the right many back and forth, uh, but one part is called the science for AI, so bringing all these areas that are listed, in particular neuroscience, and in particular uh, experts in ethics, uh, indigenous uh, you know, uh, people, we, we really uh, are committed to having uh, ex experts uh, from the First Nations to work with the team involved with that so as to bring the, the vision the, they have of the world, the, the, the way they think, to bear on how we develop systems. And uh, so this is uh, the, the, the effort to develop, to bring these, uh, these uh, AI systems uh, or to make sure they, they have to a higher level these qualities, these three R's. And then we, in at the same time, going back and forth, we want to use it in a part called AI for Science, which I'll come in and detail a little bit. Uh, and also with applications to society using implementation science. What you see on the right is that the government of Canada has put out the five main priorities and here we hit at least three with respect to health having increasing technology in the country and developing resilient communities um, so the ai for science part 
Uh, so so on, on the right-hand side, the AI for science is in line. Of course, we were building with some of the key uh, strategic research projects we've started to work on. Uh, so it has to do with discovering new molecules, new materials, and they, they relate also to, they are some related new materials that could be used to carbon capture and so on. Second one is uh, resilience to environmental crisis learning health systems and supply chain issues and for societies doing research on uh, on the barriers to ai adoption train and increase and work with partners to increase the uh, responsible innovation so the i'm reaching the end of the presentation the on the research part the, this project is structured in terms of nine consortium the ideas that uh, which are here ai neuroscience machine learning and lp you can see them implementation science these are the bits that we need to bring to advance to bring them all together to reach the goal and uh, the way we are managing that is by making calls to, with within all our academic uh, members all these institutes that that we have and we are, you know, this is a demanding process, but we work with each of them to make them come up with the plans to uh, achieve the, uh, the announced uh, program. This was my, I made a presentation uh, to the, the selection committee. This was my last page to them. So you can feel the pitch, but uh, claim that uh, it's important, called it the revolution. We have this, uh, we're blessed to have Benjo, is really a remarkable scientist, truly. Uh, and uh, Ivado, I think, is very well designed for the, the task. It, again, it, it was built on the configuration we, we had. The universities, are truly behind because as you can imagine this uh, i should say this program is remarkable brings a lot of resources but it is structured so that each universities in canada have only one token they can only apply with one application and so it means that the, for the university of montreal ai it's truly its top priority so there's a real alignment around it and 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 support and it is important this is something the uh, the canadian government wishes but it's something that we espouse that uh, the uh, uh, the the indigenous people uh, and the equity seeking groups be involved so that is uh, is the presentation that I wanted to make, but I I, uh, I trust that uh, it it illustrate my, my strong belief in collaboration. That we it does not come easy. Always requires efforts to to work with somebody else to bring organizations to work together, various universities to work together. But in my little experience we all all parties always gain and uh, so uh, the spirit uh, that I, I would be delighted to uh, if this presentation of Ivado would serve as a way to engage the conversation about how we could collaborate how your organization and Ivado could collaborate so on that I'd like to thank you very much for your attention Thanks very Thanks. much, Luke. Um, so, are there any questions from the audience or online? Yeah, I'll, I'll have a look at that. So, you described all these interesting applications, uh, but what about the, the methods being used to tackle in these applications? Do they have a lot of overlap or are they all sort of going in different directions in terms of the underlying methods? I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of people are using deep learning methods these days. Is, is, is that a, Okay. Okay. I'll repeat the question. Is uh, 
that I've described various applications and are the methods used in the applications are as diverse as the application? Is there some unity? Um, that, that's a complicated question. There's the certainly um, AI is becoming a very large field. Um, and um, okay, there's many things to be said. We work with partners that are at various levels of awareness and of expertise with AI. And, and, I, and for us, especially within Quebec and Canada, uh, the industrial substrate is made, made out of many small and medium enterprises. So they need to be brought along. So the problems will be sometimes rather modest, but we need, but they will lead. And, and we have, you know, very advanced uh, companies like Brainbox and, and, and so on. Um, so there's a diversity, but, but at the same time, you know, data is a, the key aspect. It, you, you need to, to build on that. And, um, okay, then, then I'll, I'll turn around or, or, or take a different tack on your question. It's often said, take the example of ChatGBT, that maybe it's pointless to, to have the universities be involved in AI. So maybe, you know, we just let the GAFAM go, they, they'll pour in more and more resource and they'll, uh, and, and there we, we feel, it's my view uh, that this is not the correct take, that already chat gpt the, the the problems the hallucination it has the these problems can be rooted to situation that arise even if you're losing using a much smaller data set and so we as universities need to become more ingenious and this is required and that ingenuity becomes a trait of that cuts across the various aspects of uh, that are used and uh, employed in solving the, the problems. So there's a diverse, long answer. So there's certainly diversity of problems in, in, the, in this AI scale and in the application area, but nevertheless, there's a thread that unifies them uh, and the, so that uh, in the exercise, it is important to bring AI experts to, to work with the others. Another thing is that, you know, the AI guys, they, they, they want to develop the, the, the fancy stuff uh, for, for, but there's some fancy things to do also looking at the cross in, in, in other disciplines. I don't know if I answered your question. Also on, on the, uh, the, the big uh, tech companies, uh, the idea of uh, using more and more computing power and is not an ecological solution. At some point, the energy that is required forces also reflecting more ingeniously on, on what could be done. I also encourage people online to uh, put questions in chat. I, I have a follow on question, which is something that's interested me for a while. And your presentation is perfect for suggesting this, but it's a very high level question. So if it's not interesting, please just ignore it. <laughs> if, if you look at 600 years ago, when university started, a few clever people went to a place and they said, I'm not in the church and I'm not, I don't belong to the king. I'm a power broker. My intelligence is my guarantee. And you had tenure and all this stuff. And you created these little, little, monasteries almost of intelligence sitting there and through the centuries universities have evolved now into much more vocational schools it's not that a university is the place of the thinker it's now the university is the place where you teach kids to go out and work right so there's less and less difference between the traditional vocational school and the university and more and more people like in holland everybody goes to university now it's just part of your education so what you see then is, is a, a, a continuum between the, the education part 
the thinking research part, the application company part, as you see it in Evado, right? So the focus moves away from the university into the cross-disciplinary activity where all kinds of people are doing things and education is one piece of it, research is one piece of it. It could be in the university, it could be in the big tech company, it could be anywhere. But if you bind them together and you put entrepreneurship and social responsibility and everything in the picture like you do here, you get to a different kind of animal, not the university, it's just a small piece of a bigger thing. Could you imagine a hundred years from now, everybody saying, of course, that's what we do. Ivado is the future and university is just a small piece of a big thing, or is Ivado still kind of a, a thing on the side of a university? That is a fascinating question. <laughs> and um, yeah, universities, I, I, I love universities. It's my life. And uh, so, and I, find it hard to imagine them going away the the and somehow it's a recall force uh in in the with respect because all these developments are absolutely mind boggling it's fantastic but there are risks and uh and the human the part of all that I attach very deeply to the humanist values of universities. And the role is very important. Now, society has to benefit from it. It has because universities, you know, we kept training people. So, you know, the knowledge that we disseminate, this is the best thing we, most important thing we, we do as universities. But the, the, the being in tune with the societies or, or, or forcing or uh, the, the critical uh, analysis of, of the values is something universities, I think, will, will always have to do. Now, the delivery model, the, the form it takes, that that is bound to, to evolve. It, it already has over, over the years, but the you know the, the soul of what makes a university, I don't think will, will change. I that that's maybe I'm I'm just uh, too conservative, but uh, that, that's my uh, my inner feeling. Beautiful question, thank you. Any other questions from the audience or online? Oh, also, uh, but just on, on, on the last question, um, you know, one thing it, it's very important for society to to benefit from all, all the benefits so so that that uh, we we care about that but we also care about areas that would not be driven naturally say the use of ai in education the use in um, uh, in social development in the in in the, uh, fighting poverty and, and things like that where uh, we we need to put pressure for 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 that to occur will not just the, it's not the forces of the market that will generate that and real universities are also important there yes uh, professor Vinay, welcome tom keegan from matrix um, on uh, ivado's uh, website you list the Tortoise Global AI Index, um, which is a measure of artificial intelligence through analysis, investment in innovation and implementation. Canada ranks for talent at seventh, infrastructure 15th, operating environment fifth, research 10th, development 10th, and commercial sixth with an overall ranking of fourth in the world and a government strategy ranking of number one in the world. Can you reflect on the difference government strategy makes to AI and to Canada nationally? It's, it is a fact that, it, th thank you for mentioning that. I, uh, the, the programs, um, Canada was off, was quick off the block to, uh, and it is 
it should be commended for appreciating that it really had leaders that were working that had achieved important results. Uh, a lot of what I've described, and especially in my introduction, you know, uh, it, it takes a, a confluence of, uh, you know, being in a position to react and having something to react to. Uh, so, so this is when these two things happen that, you know, sparks. Uh, and so Canada has done its share in, in, with respect to the strategy, it came up with a strategy and, Quip, and the province also followed suit. Uh, so this is why Quebec is, is, is maybe the uh, one, um, one of the world's foci. Uh, but this said, uh, it, nothing is ever perfect. And there's some criticism. I was just this morning doing an interview uh, with our national uh, newspaper, the Globe and Mail, and they are putting in question, well, saying that Canada is great with research, but do we have it right with respect to, to transfer and patenting and uh, all that? Some people are, you, you know, there's uh, the view that all this should be more on the open. Uh, this is again related to 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 the, uh, the the question, but for sure, what I've been talking about has much benefited from the, the support of Canada and the Canadian taxpayers. It should never be been be forgotten, uh, and uh, and the point we made was we, we should keep pushing because, of course, since, as you know, China and the U.S. are uh, hard at it and, and we, we, we should keep, uh, keep with the pace. Sorry, just a little question follow on. I'm working with an economist at Carnegie Mellon University, where I was before, on the economic value of AI. So we have over a million patents and we pull this in and we do NLP. I'm an NLP person. And then we, we look, we have a partner in the Census Bureau in Washington who then says, when we see an economic patent activity in a company or in a sector, then two years later, we see more hiring, change of hiring, more money being made, et cetera, in the AI creators. This morning, we saw a slide from the Census Bureau guy who said that in the United States, a survey that the census has that they finished last year, 0.5% of companies actually produce AI of all the companies that respond to the census survey. 0.5% actually make AI and 3.2% actually use AI. So it's a tiny fraction of the United States economy that actually is involved in AI. When you do a, a, a size adjusted thing, when you say how many people in big companies use AI, small companies don't, then you go up to 12.5% of size adjusted companies or people companies, right? Uh, make AI and something like 22, 23, I forget percent actually see AI in their work as users. So AI still has a very long way to go before it actually affects society, as you were saying, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, this, I agree fully, but I'd, I'd like to, see if you have a, I, can send you the I would much appreciate, yes. But we, we were agreed and this was the, the, the point of this application we're making. Adoption is very small at, at this point. Okay, so with that, I'd like to thank everyone for attending, both here and, uh, and online. This is about uh, for the remainder of this week. So if you'd like to talk to him in person, then it's always uh, possible. Right. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.